Building work for the new Ceylon Bagrit Centre for the Imperial College Centre for Biological and Medical Systems began in the autumn of 1990. The new centre was designed to bring together academics already working in the field of biological and medical systems in purpose-built laboratories on the Imperial College campus. The old steam laboratories were refurbished and architects from ORMS called in to design the new centre. Work made possible by the generous donation of funds from the Bagrit Foundation and the particular enthusiasm of Lady Stella Bagrit. Academics and other members of the centre prepare exhibits and equipment for the evening preview and royal visit. Later the same day, Tuesday the 9th of July, 1991, more than a hundred guests attended a dinner hosted by Sir Eric and Lady Ash in honour of Lady Stella Bagrit. The guests were received in the garden of the rector's residence, 170 Queensgate. Lady Stella Bagrit and Lord Rees Mogg are driven to the dinner in a vintage Lancia by its owner, Mr. Peter Moore, an emeritus reader at Imperial College. Other members of the family are taken on the old fire engine Jezebel, the mascot of the Royal College of Science. During dinner, Sir Eric Ash pays tribute to Lady Bagrit's vision in supporting the work of the Centre for Biological and Medical Systems. And then, of course, we have great pleasure in thanking the trustees of the Sir Leon Bagrit Foundation. And I'm quite sure that none of them, including the chairman, Lord Rees-Mogg, will mind if I talk specifically about one of those trustees, Lady Stella Bagrit. Um, the fact that uh, they were able to support this venture was an absolutely essential element in bringing it about. There's no way in which we could have begun to think about doing it um, uh, with, without them. Um, I would ask you to share the enormous pleasure that we have that she chose to support our vision. Uh, right from the very beginning, she has been wholly involved with everything that goes on from the very first sketch plans that we were looking at, right down to the sauce which was served with the salmon tonight. <coughs> <coughs> I'm quite sure that her interest will not lag at this point 
and that she will continue uh, to inspire us with her enthusiasm as we embark on the researches within the center. The adventure really is only just beginning. Uh, I think that all of us as trustees feel that it has been a particular privilege to be able to carry out what are essentially Stella's wishes. Uh, and it's a great pleasure for us uh, that so many members of her and Leon's family are able to be here this evening. Uh, it has been uh, Stella's purpose, her sense of will, her generosity, uh, which have created uh, this very important centre, uh, which have made the financing of it possible and made the doing of it possible. And it is something which the other trustees uh, feel a great gratitude to have been able to join in assisting. But that's all the role that we've had. I feel also that on this occasion, we very much do want to remember what an extraordinary and remarkable man Leon Bagrit was. Certainly one of the great men that I've met in my lifetime and one of the men whose character as well as his intellect I admired most. Uh, Gillian and I had a piece of astonishing good fortune. We uh, went out as a young married couple to America with my mother uh, on the liner France in, I think it was 1963. And we found in the leisurely conditions in which one traveled in those days, and the, and the abolition of Atlantic liners has prevented a great deal of advantageous company and conversation, that uh, Stella and Leon were on board. And I spent most of the five days when I wasn't being seasick uh, being educated by Leon in the ideas that he had then formed, ideas uh, which were expressed in the Reith lectures and which gave a quite astonishing picture of the world as it was developing. Using sparklers to light their way, guests left to see the new center. This preview of the facilities was hosted by the academics involved. Coffee was served and music provided by three Imperial College students. Rebecca Finn, Peter Gibb and Claire Townsend. The following morning, the 10th of July, 1991, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal, in her capacity as the Chancellor of the University of London, arrived to formally open the Bagrit Centre. The Chancellor is presented to Lady Ashe, wife of the Rector, Sir Frank Cooper, Chairman of the Governing Body, Professor Brian Coles, the Pro-Rector, Angus Fraser, Managing Director of Imperial College, and Lady Stella Bagrit. At the entrance to the Ceylon Bagrit Centre, Professor Colin Caro, Director of the Centre for Biological and Medical Systems, presents Lord Rees Mogg and Professor Peter Fielding, nephew of the late Sir Leon Bagrit. The 
Chancellor was then shown around the centre by senior academics. <laughs> Professor Keith Ruddock, Dr Robert Schroeter, Professor Alan Swanson and Professor Andrew Nicolaides. The Chancellor showed great interest in all areas of research and in October 1991, 12 students will begin the newly established MSc course. Before leaving, the Chancellor viewed the MSc laboratory. Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, it is almost three years ago that we completed the merger of St Mary's Hospital Medical School with Imperial College. And you were kind enough, Chancellor, to preside over our celebrations on that occasion, which I'm sure you will remember. It was on the whole light on speeches, fairly heavy on music. And the one mistake which I do remember is that we put your chair right next to the cymbals. <laughs> <laughs> the orchestra was rather exuberant, but you never flinched. <laughs> The merger has happened, it is complete, in as much as mergers ever can be complete, they're, they're, they grow, but there's a, a great deal of collaboration which has been engendered between um, the part of Imperial College, north of the park as we now call it, and south of the park, both on research and, and on teaching. And uh, it is the Sir Leon Bagrat Centre here which is the physical embodiment of the inspiration which lay behind that merger. The inspiration which really recognized the fact that science and engineering on the one hand um, had so much to do with medical science, including clinical medical science on the other, and that by bringing the two together and now to some extent in, in, into one space, um, one can really achieve things which could otherwise not be achieved. It was a concept which was very much in the mind of Sir Leon Bagrat, as I know, and as anybody who heard the Reith lectures which he delivered in 1964 would have discovered even at that time. Now, I happen to know, ma'am, that you were too young at the time to listen to the Reith lectures, and you were not therefore able to display the interest and the enthusiasm which you have displayed this afternoon, for which we are also very grateful. The fact uh, that the center exists at all owes everything to the Salian Bagrat Foundation, and although she has a slight tendency to hide behind the assembled ranks of the trustees, it is really to Lady Stella Bagrat that I would like to express the thanks of Imperial College and my personal thanks as well. Not just for her generosity, but also for the terrific enthusiasm which she has shown for the, the project uh, right from the, the very beginning. Now, there are some advantages in having a family, um, and Lady Stella Bagrat has a rather large family, you can see assembled here, many of whom have come across the Atlantic to be here with us this afternoon. And amongst her family, there is um, um, uh, Professor Peter Fielding, who is, uh, was for many years a, a surgeon at St. Mary's Hospital, and St. Mary's Hospital Medical School, standing right behind me, and he will say a few words on behalf of the family uh, in the moment. Um, but before I do so, I would like to express our thanks to you, Chancellor, for giving us the time this afternoon, what I know is a, an extremely busy schedule. It is a, a very important occasion to us, but it is made much more so by your gracious presence. Your Royal Highness, Sir Eric, my lords, ladies, honored family and guests. Sir Leon Bagrat, who is known to me, of course, as Uncle Leon, is being honored today by the opening of this new department at Imperial College. For me, the memories and recollections of Uncle Leon are many. The books, the art, the violin, 
the affectionate clean cleaning of the bronzes, but most of all the debate, the discussion. As a young child, I remember hearing snippets of conversation, day-to-day -day events, the arts, the national scene, issues of war and peace, the betterment of man by the application of science and technology to medicine, all had their place. It is clear that Liam Bagrat had a very broad view of life and was able to, to apply that breadth to business with success. The leadership quality which brings together ideas and people to make the product greater than the sum of the parts is sought by many but given to so few. The resultant dynamic derived from such forces has its counterparts in other pursuits. The words we use in biological and medical sciences to describe these bringing together phenomena are many. Interface in computer science, hybrid vigor in biology, catalyst in chemistry, enzyme in biochemistry, and even pulsed magnetic fields in biophysics. The notion of a loving relationship also embodies and captures the essence upon which change is based. Of course, the environment in which such change occurs is of particular concern. And I think even the most architectural strong critic might approve of what, where we're standing today. Claude Bernard, who was the first to define the idea of biological stability of the internal environment, taught us that the blood is not only the source, but also the confluence of all the fundamental changes in the body. I believe that departments such as the one we're standing in today devoted to interdisciplinary research and development should be view viewed as the research blood of change to improve the human condition. Such environments stimulate the release of those forces which result in knowledge and progress for science, health, happiness, and a long life. It is with these thoughts of debate and leadership, of research and development, which should be uppermost in our minds today. Chancellor, on behalf of my family and the Board of Trustees, I respond to your most gracious presence here today to open the Salim Bagrat Center. I thank you. Unveiling the commemorative plaque, the Chancellor declares the Salim Bagrat Center open and wishes well to all who will work here. A brass quintet composed of students from the Royal College of Music provides upbeat accompaniment from the foot of the Queen's Tower. After those originally presented take their leave, Miss Victoria Khan, granddaughter of Lady Bagrat, presents a bouquet to the Chancellor. And finally, Professor Peter Grant from Imperial College, the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of the University of London, bids Her Royal Highness farewell.